When an EF2 tornado ripped through Rome this summer, a city symbol took a big hit. Six months later, renovations for the iconic B-52 bomber are set for takeoff. When the B-52 Stratofortress first took flight in 1952, no one could have predicted that this bomber would not only outlast the Cold War but also enter the 21st century as a vital part of the U.S. Air Force. Now, more than 70 years later, the B-52 remains in active service and is undergoing yet another modernization to extend its combat effectiveness for decades to come. Let's take a closer look at how a mid-20th century turboprop project evolved into a symbol of strategic power in the modern era. Like many of America's most iconic aircraft, the B-52 was born out of the urgent need to counter the Soviet threat. When selecting a manufacturer for the Air Force's next-generation nuclear bomber, the choice was clear. By the end of World War II, Boeing had already cemented its reputation with the legendary B-17 Flying Fortress, which had proven its worth in both the Pacific and European theaters. And while the company was rolling off its nearly 4,000th B-29 Superfortress bomber in November of 1945, Air Material Command presented its requirements for a new bomber, which was intended to be a replacement for the Convair B-I-36 Peacemaker strategic bomber. The list of characteristics included availability of a crew of five or more, turret gunners, and six-man relief, airspeed of 300 miles per hour, combat radius of 5,000 miles, armament in the form of 20mm cannons and 10,000 pounds of various munitions. Then, within a few months, speed requirements increased to 400 miles per hour, flight range to 12,000 miles, and the need to deliver nuclear weapons was added to the command's list of wants. The main stumbling block was the choice between turboprop and turbojet engines. Military command was concerned about the high fuel consumption of the jet engines of the day, ordering Boeing to use one of the first B-52 prototypes, the 46,440, which replaced Westinghouse J-40 turbojet engines with turboprops. On this basis, even the generals argued with each other more than once. General Howard Craig, deputy chief of staff for Material, was not enthusiastic about the B-52 jet, believing that these engines were not yet advanced enough to allow them to skip the turboprop intermediate stage. While Deputy Chief of Air Staff for Research and Development, General Curtis LeMay, in contrast, argued in favor of more powerful jet engines, insisting that range problems could be solved a little later simply by improving the aircraft's airframe, and demanded that the proposed tandem pilot seating arrangement, in the style of the earlier Boeing B-47 Stratajet bomber, be changed to a side-by-side -side arrangement to reduce pilot fatigue and improve morale during long flights. As a result of all these disputes and deep-thinking requests for the characteristics of the device, after all the edits, it settled on a speed of 500 miles per hour and a flight range of 8,000 miles. Near the end of the Stratofortress design, there was even a moment when Boeing engineers George S. Scara, Art Coralson, Von Blumethal, Maynard Pennell, Bob Withington, and Vice President of Engineering Ed Wells bought the necessary materials at a hobby store and designed the B-52 prototype literally garage style at the Van Cleve Hotel in Dayton, Ohio. Based on the basic layout of the B-47 Stratajet with 35-degree swept wings, eight engines were set up with four underwing nacelles and bicycle landing gear with wingtip outrigger wheels. The result of the Dayton weekend was the ideal shape of a subsonic aircraft made of balsa wood and painted silver. The military was very pleased with the work of the engineers, and the B-52 went into print. The first Stratofortress took to the skies in April 1952, three years after the USSR developed its first atomic weapon. In June 1955, the bomber entered service with the 93rd Heavy Bombardment Wing at Castle Air Force Base, California. And by January 1957, three U.S. Air Force B-52s flying at an average speed of 525 miles per hour successfully carried out Operation Power Flight, setting a record for the first non-stop flight around the world on a jet engine in 45 hours and 19 minutes. This one, of course, was not the last. Over the next few years, the B-52 set other world records, such as the world record for 12,232 miles without refueling, flying from Kadena Air Base, Okinawa Prefecture, Japan, to Torrejon Air Base, Spain. To date, the only modification of the Stratofortress in U.S. service is the B-52H, which emerged as a derivative of the B-52G with the same basic airframe. 
Cruise speed increased to 550 miles per hour and its range without refueling was now about 8,800 miles. Additionally, the model received a new tail turret armed with a single 20mm M61A1 Vulcan rotary cannon, an avionic suite optimized for low-altitude operation including Advanced Capability Radar ACR, with terrain-following function, and a new fire control system. The U.S. Air Force continues to rely on the B-52, affectionately calling it the Buff, as it remains the most effective and cost-effective heavy bomber in the absence of sophisticated air defense, especially when it comes to post-Cold War U.S. missions against countries with limited defensive capabilities. These bomb carriers have not only been integral to the success of ground operations like Iraqi Freedom, but also have the highest mission readiness rate of the three types of heavy bombers operated by the U.S. Air Force. During the 2001 period, the no less legendary Rockwell B-1 Lancer had an average readiness rate of 53.7%, and the new-fashioned Northrop B-2 Spirit Stealth Bombers had an average readiness rate of 30.3%, versus an impressive 80.5% for the Stratofortress. But even legends need updates. That's why in April of 2012, the U.S. Air Force issued a request for proposals for 68 commercial engines, launching the Commercial Engine Re-Engining Program, CERP, under which General Electric offered its CF-34-10 and Passport turbofan engines. By September 2021, the U.S. Air Force chose the latter as the winner, announcing plans to buy 650 of these engines for a total of $6 billion. Despite the fact that the Air Force had previously considered the option of swapping the bombers from eight engines to four, CERP still retained all eight of them. While some industry experts believe that four-engine operation would be more efficient, opponents rightly point out that such an upgrade would require a redesign of the airframe as well as additional changes to systems and control surfaces. This, in turn, greatly increased the project timeline, complexity, and cost, which the U.S. Air Force certainly did not want. In addition to new engines and nacelles, one of the most radical upgrades will be the installation of the new AN APG 79B for AESA radar in the B 52J, which replaced older mechanically scanned arrays. The new AN APG 79 radar will give the B 52J significantly better radar range, accuracy, and most importantly, resistance to enemy countermeasures, not to mention general awareness of what's happening on the battlefield. While the immediately noticeable update was the return of the bomber's nose to its classic look, we're talking about completely eliminating the pair of fairings under the nose, the right one housing the forward-looking infrared system, FLIR, and the left one housing the Westinghouse AN AVQ-22 low-light level television, LLTV. Together, they formed the electro-optical viewing system, EVs, which helped crews fly safely at extremely low altitudes. However, it was completely replaced by more modern targeting pods, Lockheed Martin Sniper or Northrop Grumman Lightning, mounted on pylons under the left wings of B-52H bombers. The rendering presented by Boeing in 2022 left many questions about whether the underwing store's pylons, which lack any sort of fine detail, were made to demonstrate a specific design or simply placeholders. The one under the right wing, which is not clearly visible, may be intended to demonstrate loading with some kind of large missile, for example, the AGM-183A air-launched rapid response weapon ARRW hypersonic missile. If this project had not been cut in FI 2025, it's a pity, because in March of 2024 the testing of the AGM-183A ARRW from AB Air 52H near Guam was done successfully. Although this does not negate what the Air Force talked about, acquiring new stores pylons for the B-52 fleet with a higher payload, and Boeing clearly started working on its own design called Hercules, which allows the aircraft to carry 20,000 pounds on each wing and adapt not only to expand the arsenal of existing weapons but also hypersonic missiles that will soon be available to the U.S. Air Force. The most vicious weapons of the B-52 were, are, and will be nuclear weapons. Since 1971, modifications of the B-52G and B-52H have received the ability to carry up to 20 AGM-69 SIM nuclear missiles, and a little later, they were replaced by AGM-86 missiles. And even though the B-52H bombers that remained in service were subsequently stripped of their nuclear fangs back in 2010, voices from US Congress about returning these celestial giants to nuclear status have been heard more often recently. 
In the summer of 2024, there was talk of restoring the nuclear capability of at least 30 of the 76 U.S. Air Force B-52H bombers, which would soon receive an upgrade to the B-52J modification. They will be equipped with the latest air-launched cruise missiles with a nuclear warhead, AGM-181 long-range standoff weapon. The only question is, does the U.S. Air Force still have the enthusiasm to rearm its old B-52s with a nuclear arsenal, even if they have extended their service until the early 2050s? Especially if today's military command is busy preparing fresh Lockheed B-21 Raider bombers for operation. Only time will show. Do you think the Stratofortress will be able to supplant the younger B-2 Spirit and B-21 Raider, regaining its place at the top of the nuclear triad? Share your guesses in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.